subscriptions. I don't like them. But what I really don't like is I think the word subscription has been hijacked. Software as a service is not subscription. It's more like a gym membership. You pay your monthly dues, you use it a bit at first, and then a year's gone by and you haven't been. Similar with software as a service. You know, people could say what's great about SaaS is, is it, it makes everything kind of inclusive. But, well, I've calculated that I've spent over seven grand on my Adobe subscription since they went live 10 years ago. I would say that that's me being done up like a kipper. My first experience of a subscription, and the correct interpretation of the word, is taking a little token by a gentleman called Tharg into Mr. Shah's newsagent, at which point every two weeks thereafter, there was a copy of 2000 AD sitting behind the counter waiting for me. And eventually I went into Mr. Shah's newsagent and said, could you unsubscribe me? He didn't then drive round to my house and demand that I have my massive pile of treasured Judge Dredd's Strontium Dogs and, and Halo Jones returned back to him. So I want to introduce this model to our world. So this is how I see it. This is a vault and it's a place where we put sounds. This first vault will always be free, but we will be releasing different vaults. First being mine, with some amazing stuff to go in. We're thinking maybe a fiver a month for this, but would really like your feedback on that. There's also some amazing artist vaults coming up, but one in particular that I think will make you dribble. So when you get access to your vault, you can grab everything or the bits that you want, and use them for the rest of your life. We won't ask for them back, but there is just one catch. The whole point of subscription is that each vault will have limited space. So in order to put new stuff in, we will take the old stuff out. And being a member of these different vaults will afford you all sorts of other privileges too. Gotcha. I've got a story to tell you. Um, it started in 2008, which to me, a man of my age, sounds so futuristic because when I was a kid, 2008 looked like this. So to think that 2008 was a long time ago in the past is preposterous until you consider that it was the year Barack Obama was made president for the first time. It was the year that Usher uh, signed someone who became very famous, a Canadian singer, to, um, is it Def Jam Records? Yeah, Usher's got a piece of that pie. I mean, especially if you think it was two years after the first tweet, but two years before the first Instagram. Suddenly you go, yeah, that was a long time ago. But it was also a year that I inadvertently did something that's probably the most successful thing I've ever been involved with. And that was to sample a piano with a Celeste pedal down in the days before you Googled stuff to find out stuff, and I named it the felt piano, and it became the soft piano, and it was downloaded, or has been downloaded, three million times. So I went, it's so two and a half weeks ago, I went down into my cellar, or my vault, if you will, to locate these master recordings, and just to open them up and have a look. And then this happened. Ah, I've totally forgotten. I recorded four different things that day. There's Celeste, Marimba, there's f five things. Celeste, Marimba, Steinway, and Vibes. This is just nuts. So loading it into your door, I pretty much only use Logic. So I'd really appreciate your help as this is a free download. I don't suppose you can get me some screen captures of the doors that you use, possibly with a VO as well. Um, if we use them in future videos or on our FAQ, you'll get some free merch. Um, details down below of where to send those to. Right, so basically 
in Logic, go to Instrument, go to AU Instruments, Crow Hill, Vox Beta, and then boom. Now, the reason we're calling it Beta is this is gonna be a, a plugin that contains many different instruments, everything that you've grabbed from the vault. But at the moment in Beta, it is simply a host for the Attic Grand and that wonderful backstory. really like about it is it's easy to make <laughs> you sound like you can actually play. My level is wedding band um, piano player. The problem with MIDI is it doesn't interpret how hard you play by how hard you play. It interprets it by how fast the key goes down. So with a lovely piano like this, um, it, there's a lot of travel. It can really interpret it. But with the smaller keyboards that you get, there's very, very little travel distance. So I don't know if you've ever used like a, you know, one of those portable keyboards and you'll suddenly find with a multi-layered sample that, that the loud layers jump out and it becomes very difficult to play. And I think this 2008 experiment helps us. makes me sound less like a wedding piano player. We've applied that mythology to the GUI and the effects that come packaged with the Attic Grand. And when we add new instruments, there'll be tailor-made effects or macros actually that will suit that instrument. So let me take you through the GUI. So let's go from the top here clockwise. First of all, you've got this inbuilt guide here, which is super sexy. Uh, the team that have worked on this are literally the best in the world and um, I'm not joking when I said they started work on this two and a half weeks ago. It's absolutely insane. So that's your little guide there. To get out of it just hit cross. Here you have your VU meter which we all use for going. I can see it but I can't hear it. You can also control your main volume there and what I like there's a few as it opens up it has a few effects in there and what I really like if you were to automate this, it remains musical. So we've got macros one, two, three, four, five, six here. And this controls that one, which is reverse. And this one controls that one, which is offset. Reverse. It's really musical. Further down you get, the less pronounced the reverse is so that it doesn't muddy up your playing. But up here, it's really pronounced. So it really works. Again, these are, these are very much bespoke macros designed for the instrument itself. So let's take that down. The reason why your wedding piano player or keyboard player is playing ahead of the beat, a lot of drummers and bassists complain about this, is because if they learn on the piano, it takes a while for the note to actually sound. So we all play ahead of the beat. Now, the problem with a lot of sample libraries is people want them to be tight when playing live. And keyboard players who are more used to synths they don't enjoy the lag of the, the, the piano. So what we've done is we've done this offset here. If I put my mic close to the keys, you'll hear how tight it is. As a duck's ass underwater. And then here. That ensures you get all of that lovely noise of the piano beater hitting the string. And, and there's even more fun to be had. And when I mention the word macros, these aren't single effects that actually affect chains uh, that have been, again, purposely and really beautifully designed for this instrument. And these ones down here are called Smash, Hair, Echo and Splosh, which I think sound like some Teletubbies that didn't make it through casting. So let's go from here.
hooks it all the way up, smash it to pieces. It's a combination of limiters, compressors, and some other interesting stuff that's been thrown in there. It's designed so this stuff plays out of the box and plays like a record and uses the experience of producers and all of these tricks of the trade, puts them just straight under your fingertips. Hair, it's a slight crunch designed on a British combo amp. I think these work really well in concert. Now with hair, it's, yes, you can hear it distorting slightly, but when you put that into a mix, you won't hear that. And what this does is basically add some upper harmonics that will make the piano easier to mix, more audible, on a variety of different speakers, like things like phones and car stereos and studio monitors. And this is because it's adding a harmonic range, which makes it more audible. On to Echo, here. Yeah. So that's speed correcting. If you, automate your tempos and have a variable tempo, it'll create all sorts of glorious effects, not horrible clicks that you get on some other delay plugins. And finally, we have Splosh. So dry, halfway, and then all the way. If you flick that, it'll reverse the direction, so it'll go splosh first, then echo. Which is a preference many people have. So, let's have some fun with this. I'm going to make it a little bit tighter so it's easier to play. Put tons of reverse in there. Smash it there. Some hair there. <laughs> 